Adding models into the admin couldn't be any simpler. It's actually so easy to do that it almost should happen by default. So, um, but the great thing about code is you get to choose all of those things. So if we go into our app and we see this file admin.py and open it up, we see that we can register our models here is what that says. Uh, very simply to actually use this model, we have to do an import that is very similar to this one. Um, but we want to do it related to our app itself, right? So this is the Django app. This is not related to our app. So we'll do from dot admin import, or excuse me, not from dot admin, but from dot models import sign up. So sign up is in our models here, and we see sign up is that model. So this is this is actually importing it here. And why we can do dot models is because we're inside of the same Python module of newsletters. So you can do a relative import into another one. If this doesn't fully make sense to you, I would say take a look at more Python courses to see a little bit more of how the syntax works. Another way you could do this is by saying newsletters or newsletter dot models import sign up. But this is not good practice because you're inside of the newsletter app, so there's no reason to reference the newsletter. You can get rid of that. Um, if you were referencing another app, so from some other app dot models, import some other model, you could do that. That is perfectly okay if you're referencing it, and you can do this in a variety of places. I'm gonna delete that now because we don't wanna get confused. But here, we've imported the signup model from here and of course, if this was named something different, you would import whatever that name is. And now it's very simple, admin.site.register and sign up. So admin.site.register, save it, make sure you constantly save, like I'm just constantly saving. You'll see every once in a while, if you look in the file, if, I, if you see it flicker like that, that means I saved it. And command S on Mac, is how you save it real fast. Control S on Windows is how you save it real fast. Okay, so now we've got this saved up and let's go ahead and go into our admin and do a quick little refresh here. And we see now we've got newsletter and this new one says signups. Notice how it's spelled out, signups. Uh, we didn't put that anywhere, right? So it's very intuitive on how that part's gonna work. And it's because of how we named it here. If you named it differently, it would come out differently. Um, okay, so now that we've got this, let's go ahead and add a signup. And look at we've got an email and a full name. If I hit save and continue editing, it says please correct the error below. This field is required, so email is required. Full name is not required. Well, let's change full name to being required by changing blank to false. And we refresh in here. And now it's saying full name is required. Cool. So that's how blank works. Null is a little bit different, and that's going to work on the database itself, which I'll let you play around with at this point. Um, but now let's go ahead and try and add in something that is not related to an email. I'll just say ABC and then a full name. Hi, this is my name. Again, does not really matter for either one of those, but let's go ahead and save and continue. And it says enter a valid email address. So something that's built into this field itself is a email validator. So if I said abc at abc.com, I could go ahead and hit save and continue. And now it saves it. And if we look in our signups, we see, hey, check it out. We actually have that data in here. And you could repeat this process. And just by adding you know, anything else, you can add abc again and go ahead and hit save and continue. And going back into signups, we see now that there's two of those saved. So this is actually showing us the database. This is stuff in the database that's actually showing up. Uh, and we're actually adding them in. So if you canceled out your server and came back, you would definitely see all this stuff. And what you're seeing right here is the Unicode. So the Unicode is actually coming through. That is what we see. So that's what this is right here. If you just said return self, for example, and we refresh in here, we get an error, right? It's not making sense because it, it'll give you this error right here. It needs string or buffer. So you can't do all sorts of things. So let's even try timestamp. Refresh in here. And again, it's saying the same thing. Instead, it's finding date time found. There's a lot of errors that might happen um, when you do this. So you can turn it into a Python string uh, and you can refresh in here. And then now it's showing it. Um, and notice that we have all this different time. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm gonna turn it back into the email, self.email. 
and refresh. So now we've got this email in here. Uh, but I want to add something a little bit more dynamic to this admin. And to do that, we go back into admin.py. And now we're going to add in a new admin class. So we'll do class and I'll call it sign up admin. And this is going to take admin.model admin. And I'll do class meta. And we'll say model equals to sign up. And now down in register, we'll change this to sign up admin. So adding one more attribute or one more argument here um, to the register call. And what this, this allows us to do is customize how the admin works a little bit. Um, so let's say for instance, we wanted to see like the timestamp and updated when it was updated. So the timestamp and when it was updated. So to do that, we're gonna add in list display and then it's gonna be a list. So we're listing off what we wanna display. The first thing would be Unicode. And then the second thing would be timestamp. And then the third thing we'll say updated. So we'll save that and we'll come back into here, refresh. And what we see is we've got our sign up, our timestamp and when it was updated. So this is actually a very cool and dynamic way on how to actually do this, right? So if I click on this, notice it doesn't actually show the timestamp itself. The timestamp is hidden because we can't actually change it. So this is all about changing it. So it says change sign up. It's not really about seeing it. Now we can absolutely make changes to that, but that's getting a little bit more advanced for the admin. But just keep in mind that there's all types of things that you can do here. And when it comes down to it, you're going to want to check out the model reference for admin by doing a quick search for admin. And you see down here, it says the Django admin site. This gives us the admin site and there's all sorts of things that you can do for the admin itself. Um, you can read through this if you'd like to see all different kinds of things that you can do within the admin. You can say explicitly say what the fields are. So these are fields related to the model itself. Uh, you can exclude fields, you can add read only fields, you can do field sets all sorts of things that you can do in here um, to just kind of change the way your admin looks and works. Now, this comes to the question of how much time and effort do you want to put into making your admin robust versus making something robust for your end users. I would say you want to put more time into making something robust for your end users and use the admin sparingly unless you have a big staff, right? So like if, if, if I just had a staff of, let's say, uh, two people, me and one other person, um, we could look at this and say, okay, do I really need the timestamp to display here? Well, that's going to be your call. At the end of the day, I think this works just fine. And there's a, definitely a lot more stuff you can do with the admin. But at this point, this is actually pretty good for our purposes in this case. And you can also sort things by this as well, which is kind of nice. Uh, and the other side of it is you can go through this documentation and you should try different things out, see what you can do. So filter horizontal, how does that work? And what can you do? So read it and try it and break it. That's part of coding, part of learning Django very well. Okay, so if you have any questions on the admin stuff, let me know. Um, in the next one, what we actually wanna take a look at is creating a form that validates this email one step further. And that's something we'll do right in the next one. If you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.